Okay, so um, so uh, before anybody asks, which I know somebody will, um, in general, the recording of this webinar will be um, available sometime on Monday. Um, it'll be posted up on YouTube, and a link to that will be sent out um, to everyone who's registered. So you should be getting something in the in the mail. Um, as it turned out, the, the last uh, time we did this, um, there was a problem with the video, so it took a few more days um, to get it uh, to get it fixed up uh, in order to post it. But um, you know, generally, uh, as long as the video initially um, uh, converts properly, then uh, then it should be up by Monday. Okay, so um, so now that we've got the recording going, I can start. And the topic today is. Uh, mashing up data, and the idea here is just to give you an introduction to some of the features that are available for mashing up data from different data sources. So here's some of the issues that we're going to look at. Um, first of all, uh, joining together different data models or different queries or different uh, database tables. Right? So that's one form of mashing up. Um, in this case, these uh, the example that we're going to look at will look at mashing up two different data models that are based on the same data source. So they're both pulling data from the same database, but they're two different models. So they don't uh, the models don't have any relation uh, to one another. But we'll see how you can mash them up uh, all the same. Um, and then we'll look at something uh, more general, which is uh, mashing up different data sources. So let's say you have a uh, um, an Excel file data source or a text file data source along with your relational database data sources, right, and you want to mash those up together, mash up your text file with your Oracle database, that kind of thing. Right, so that's an example of mashing up different data sources. We'll take a quick look at that. Um, and then we're going to look at also the case of embedded data, how if you have um, data that either you've entered manually or simply uploaded from a text file or Excel file, you can mash that up with queried uh, data. So you have some data coming from your database, you've got some other data that you just uploaded from a local file or that you typed in manually, you can mash that up together. And then finally we'll look at some other types of mashups such as concatenations, which are unions and intersections um, and differences, and we'll look at um, also mashups that uh, do not involve any relationships, which are uh, merge joins and also cross joins. Right? So that's the, that's the general topic for today. So let's begin um, uh, at the beginning, uh, which is just uh, the, uh, the concept of mashing up different data models, different queries or tables. So uh, I have here running my portal, and I'm going to open up a Visual Composer here. Hopefully everybody can see that. And so what I'm going to do is in Visual Composer, this is our web-based tool. We've looked at, uh, we've used this tool a lot uh, previously to create dashboards. Um, uh, but in this case, we're going to create a data worksheet, right? And a data worksheet is our tool for mashing up data. So when you want to mash up data, you're going to be using a data worksheet. So to create one of these um, in Visual Composer, uh, you press the new worksheet button. And that gives you this blank grid here. And on the left side, you're going to see all of your uh, data sources. Okay, so, um, so these are the uh, data sources that are installed by default um, in our uh, default installation. And you can see that there's a few, different, uh, a few different data sources. The orders data source is a relational database data source. So this is pulling data from a relational database. Um, the other data sources are uh, text data, um, uh, XML data, and I think another text um, or maybe an Excel uh, data source, right? So we have a variety of sample data sources. Um, what I'm going to show you to begin with, though, is just mashing up data from two order models, uh, two, sorry, two data models that we have that are based on the orders data source. All right. So um, if any of you have been in the, uh, the full training, you may have seen this example before, but uh, after I do this, I'll move on to some other examples. Um, Right, so these are two uh, completely different data models that somebody constructed based on this data source, and I want to show you how you can mash them up. So, for example, let's say you want to get a uh, single query, a single result set that includes both information about orders and information about returns. So you, somehow you're going to have to mash these two up. So what I'll do is, first of all, I'll make a couple of data blocks based on these uh, models. So um, just picking out some fields here, I'm going to select uh, order date and order num and product name and product category and product total 
and customer state and customer company. Okay, so this is a um, this is an example of a data block. This is this is the kind of thing that you build in a data worksheet. Um, a data block actually represents a query. So even though you can you know you've got a nice uh, graphical view of this uh, as soon as the all right, so I'm showing the live data, which means that this is the data that's being returned by the data block. Um, a data block is a nice graphical way to visualize a uh, query, right? So this data block actually represents a query that's being sent to the database. To verify that, there's an option here called show plan, and that will show you the actual query that's being sent to the database, but um, you know, you never really need to look at this. Um, you can just look at this graphical view. So this is um, a data block that we've created that contains some order information from this data model called the order model. Okay, so that's, um, so that's data block number one. All right, and now I'm going to go ahead and create a second data block based on the return model. So what we want is a set of fields from the return model, which is another data model, independent data model. And I'll select the uh, return date. All right, and the, the first thing that you'll note is that um, you, uh, I cannot simply drag fields from the return model into this data block that I've already created. So in other words, if I want to add return information into this data block here, I can't simply, uh, for example, grab the, um, you know, the return date and drag it in there. Um, that doesn't work. Nothing happens. And the reason that nothing happens is that there's no uh, relationships defined between the return model and the order model. So if I were to drop in a field from the return model, it would, would not know how to synchronize those values with the, with the order values. Right? So uh, I'm going to have to do it some other way, and I'll show you how I do it in just a moment. So uh, I'm going to build a data block based on this return data. So return date, and then order num, and then product name. Doing this quick as I can. Uh, return reason. Uh, where's the reason? There it is. Uh, return num and uh, product total. Okay, so here's um, here's a data block that's based on the uh, return model data model. Okay, so now I've got two data blocks, each one based on a different data model. And what I want to do is I want to match these up. So I can display the the live data in the return model as well, right? Just like that. So there's the the data being pulled from the uh, return model. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to mash these up, but before I do that, I, I just want to um, take a little bit of a precaution here because I notice that uh, there's a lot of similar looking field names and I feel like I'll get confused if I don't uh, disambiguate some of these field names. Now, I, I could proceed with the mashup without uh, changing any of the field names uh, because the worksheet understands uh, which field is which field and, and will not get confused, but um, but I might get confused. So I'm going to make a few changes here. So I'll call this one uh, order date, order num, name category, order total. And that's fine. And then down here, now this one is the return date. Um, this one is the order num. This is name, reason, and this one is the return num. And this is the return total. Okay, now there, um, there are a couple of, basically what we want to do now to mash these up is we want to join them together. And the fields that we want to join on here are the order number and the product name. Right, so what I want here is I want to create a single new data block, which again represents a single uh, a, a single result set. I want to create a single data block that contains all of the order information and then on each row uh, corresponding to a given order I want the corresponding return information. Right, and so the way that I need to synchronize those is based on the order number. Right, So I want to match up the uh, return that has the same order number as the original order and I also want to match up the the product name. Right, So a given order might have multiple products. I want to make sure that I'm looking at the return for the correct product on the correct order. So these are going to be the join columns and what I'm going to do, at least initially, is an inner join between these uh, two data blocks and that is the the most common tool that you'll use for mashing up 
uh, data sources uh, is um, a join, uh, and, and in most cases that will be an inner join. Uh, in some cases an outer join, as, as I'll illustrate in a moment. Okay, so um, there's a few different ways to do joins. Uh, one way is to select the two data blocks that you want to mash up, go up to the button up top called Join Table, and then select the join type that you want. Um, like I said, the most common type is inner join. These other options we'll look at um, later on, uh, but these are really special case joins. Uh, most commonly, you select inner join, and that gives you this interface, and then you can select from uh, the left table and the right table what the join fields are. Right. Um, but I want to show you a different way to do it. This is one way to do it, and um, using this method you can specify any number of joins that you want uh, as you select one join. Uh, let me just quickly illustrate. Right. So uh, return date. Right. So if I were to select a join like this, you'll notice that as soon as I create one join, uh, menus uh, are available to select uh, another join, so you're not limited to you know, one or two joins, you can keep adding um, additional joins. Uh, so this is one way to do a join between the two tables. Um, I want to show you a quicker way, uh, which is simply to uh, click and drag on a column name. So if I want to join these two data blocks on the order num field, I can click on the order num column over here, in this top data block. So I clicked on that order num column, and I'm dragging it down to the order num column in the bottom data block. And you can see when I do that, as I hover the mouse there, I'm still holding down the mouse button, uh, you can see that there's a little icon that appears indicating that this is going to uh, implement a join. Right? And when I let it go, what that does is it creates a new data block down at the bottom. And this new data block, um, it has all of the fields from the two data blocks up top. Right? So um, here's all of the fields from the order one data block and then here's all of the fields from the return one data block. And what it illustrates is that these data blocks are now synchronized on the order num column. That means in a given row here, uh, the order num column on this side is going to be the same as the order num column on that side. And that means I've got the return information and the order information synchronized on the order number. But like I said before, that's not enough. Um, I need to also synchronize the return information with the order information on the product name so that I can look at the, uh, the correct return and order information for a given product on a given order. And so what I need to do is implement another join here. And I can do that just by, again, within this resulting data, data block, I can click on the name field here and drag it over to the name field there. So that's what I'm going to do. Click on the product name here, drag it over to the product name there, and you can see that that implements a second join. Okay, so now I've got uh, two joins here. And what that means, again, is that the return information is synchronized with the order information based on the order number and on the order name, so that in a given row, if I compare the value in this order num column and the value in this name column, they will, um, uh, they will be exactly the same, identical to the order num value here and the name value there. And so the return that I see on each row is the return for the corresponding order of that product uh, on that order number. Okay, so that's a basic approach to uh, mashup, and the, the view that we're looking at here where you see the joins is called, um, it's called composition view. Right? So composition view shows you exactly how this resulting data block has been composed from the original data blocks and the, and the operations that have been done. There are other views that you can also look at. Um, if you click the change view button all the way on the right here, you'll see that there is a default view as well. If you select default view, then basically it removes the join information and it just shows you the um, it just shows you the column names and the metadata. All right. And this view is useful when you want to hide certain columns or change column names um, because you can only hide columns in the default view or in the live preview, which we'll look at in a moment. Um, now why would you want to hide columns? Well after you do a mashup like this, after you do a join, you're always going to have uh, duplicate columns because the columns that you're joining on, if you're doing an uh, inner join, right, you're, um, those columns that you join on are going to be identical by virtue of the join condition that you, uh, that you implement. So you're going to have duplicate columns. So what I can do is I can hide one of these order number columns and I can hide one of these name columns by clicking on uh, the little eyeball there to, to hide it. All right, so this is the default view. It's handy for doing that kind of thing. Um, and then there's the live preview view, which is you select, uh, click again on the change view button, select live preview, and then this is going to show you the, basically the results that this new query is going to return. 
All right, and you can see that um, it's got the order information, and then on each row, it's got the return information corresponding to that order. Okay, so that's the, the basics of doing data mashup. Now, um, as I mentioned before, you can change the, um, you can change the join type. Um, in the majority of cases, uh, inner joins are, are, are what you want, but there are uh, also a large number of cases where what you want is an outer join. Um, and it, as it turns out, that's the case here. Right, why do we want an outer join? Well, the reason is that um, if we look at the data in this data block, you can see that every order uh, has a corresponding return. Um, and uh, I guess common sense would tell us that something is not right about that, right? Because uh, if every order has a return, then you know our company is not uh, is not making very much money if everything is returned. So, um, so we did something wrong. And what we did wrong is that um, we did an inner join, uh, which by definition uh, preserves only the records where there is a match between the two tables, right? So the only data that we're seeing in this result is data where there is a value, uh, a row in the order table and a corresponding row in the return table. In other words, we're only seeing returned orders here. Uh, what you might want to do um, is you might want to create a result here that shows all of the original orders and shows the returns where they occur, but still shows the orders, the original orders, even if there was no return. And to do that, you just can change the uh, join condition. So I'm going to go back to the composition view, and then uh, I can right click over here on the data block and select join properties. Here's the, uh, the joins that we have defined. And what I can do is I can specify that I want to include all values from the order table. Right? So that would give me a left outer join, right? And basically it just means, um, left, the, the outer join just means that I want to retain all of the values from that order table, okay? Even if there is no match in the return table. So I can press okay. You can see that that changes the uh, little icon here on the join. And then if I take a look at this, uh, probably the easiest way would be to do a full preview. So I'll just right click and select uh, preview. Right, that previews it in a separate window. And you can see now that I have all of the original order information, even those orders for which there is no return. And in cases where there is a return, then I have the return information. So that's the, the concept of an outer join. Okay, so, so now you know basically how to uh, follow the procedure to mash up different data blocks. Um, and you know how to switch to composition view, default view, uh, live data view and so on, and how to change the join type. So let's move on from this example, um, and now let's take a look at a, a, a genuine case of mashing up different data sources. Like I said, this example, these are two different data models, but they're both pulling data from the same database. I want to show you that you can go beyond that and you can actually mash up data from completely different data sources. So I'm going to delete all of this. Um, before I do that, if there's any questions uh, about this, um, please uh, type in the chat box, let me know. I'll just wait a moment. In fact, um, I'm, you know, I'm gonna leave that there just in case somebody has a question later on. Um, and what I'll do is I'll open up a new worksheet to illustrate the next thing. Okay, so uh, if, the, if anyone wants to save their questions for the end, uh, you're certainly welcome to do that as well. Okay, so let's look at the next case. And the next case is mashing up two different, genuinely different data sources. Okay, and what I have here under this uh, folder called other data sources, which is part of our default installation, there's this thing called order data. And order data is, um, this is an Excel file data source. That's what the tooltip tells me. So this is the data source that was set up um, and it's pulling data from an Excel file, right? And so what I want to do is I want to bring in this data block so I can, there is a query defined on this data source right? and it's called all data. And so I'm going to grab that query and just drag the whole thing in. And that gives me a data block, right? So whenever you drag anything into a worksheet, you get a data block, right? So it gives me a data block. And this data block is just pulling data from that uh, query that's defined on the Excel data source. And we can uh, take a look at the data if you want. Okay, so this is the data that's being pulled from that Excel file, right? And it's called all data. Okay, and now what I'd like to do is I'd like to mash that up with a, a different data source. For example, the uh, customer's query that I have. Um, so I'm gonna close that, and I'm gonna go to the orders data source. The orders data source, again, is our relational database. 
And in there, I'm going to find a query. This is a query that's pulling data from uh, re our relational database, our sample relational database. It's called customers. And you can see that it just has information about the different companies. And so I'm going to pull that in as a new data block. And if you want to look at the data in there, um, there it is. Okay, and so what I'd like to do now is um, I want to mash up these two data blocks, which are from two different data sources. And the idea here um, would be, let's say that I, I, I like the information that I have in this data block, but what I'd like um, for each company, right here in the top data block, I only have the state. That's the only information that I have about that company. Um, what I might want to do is create a data block that contains uh, the company name, the state, and also the address and city. Right, so that's kind of the, the idea here. Uh, why would I want to do that? Well, maybe I want to create a dashboard uh, that, uh, that presents a table that has you know, the, full, the, the full company uh, address as well as the prices and the totals. Right? So you can use your imagination. Um, but, uh, but in any event, uh, the question is, how do I do that? And really, the procedure is the, um, the same as what we showed before. Uh, we want to do a join between these two different data blocks and the join field here is going to be the um, is going to be the company right so here I've got information this is information for each company and here I've got a company field and so I want to join those two columns so I can just click on this guy click on that company column in the, in the top table oops let me just nah. let me just deselect Okay, try that again. Drag the company field over here, drag it to the company name field over there. That creates a join table, and you can see that again, the result here has all of the fields from each of the data blocks. So here's all the fields from the all data, the top data block, and he, over here on the right side, all the fields from the customers one data block, and you can see that they've been synchronized based on the company field. So the, the uh, for each company in this all data data block, I now have all of the that company uh, address, city, state, zip, and so on, um, correctly synchronized uh, for the uh, for the proper company. And we could take a look at this uh, if you look at this in live preview. Right. So there it is. And so now for each uh, each company here, for each company, I've got not only the order information for that company, but I also have the full address. Okay, so that's an example of mashing up two genuinely different data sources, again, an Excel data source and a relational database data source. And you can see that the procedure is just the same as what we did before. Um, it's really just a join. Once you've got these different data sources represented as data blocks in the data worksheet, you could just click and drag columns to do the joins. Um, like I mentioned before, you can also do the joins by selecting the data blocks and selecting join table, inner join. Um, either approach will produce the same result. Okay, so that's an example of mashing up two different data sources. Um, let's see what we'd like to look at next. Um, next thing we want to look at, joining queried data to embedded data. Oh, there's a question. Um, the question is, uh, can you have that lower filter show at company level rather than at product level? Um, let's see, that lower filter. Um, show at company level. I'm not sure I understand the question. Can you, am I looking at the right, you're talking about this data block called query one, and um, can you say, can you rephrase that somehow? <laughs> Okay, let me see what you wrote. Okay, uh, lower table. Can the bottom table be grouped by customer, customer being the company? Ah, yeah, you, well, you can group this bottom table in various ways. I mean, there, there is a grouping uh, functionality here in the, in the title bar, so over here that you can press group and aggregate, and that gives you... Uh, you know, the ability, you can group by uh, company, and, you know, if you want to aggregate the totals for, you know, for the different companies or something, you can do all that within the, uh, within the grouping uh, dialog box, but that's a little bit outside the, the scope of, of this particular class, so, um, so I'll leave that alone. But, yes, you can, you can group in different ways. Um, okay, great. Uh, okay, that was a good question. Thank you. Um, so let's move on and look at the, the issue of... Um, mashing up 
queried data with embedded data. There's something that you might have to do on occasion. So I'm going to create a new worksheet. I'll just keep these other worksheets here in case anybody has questions about them later. Um, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to, first of all, uh, get a query here. I've got a query here called sales by state. Very simple query. Let me just show you what it is. All right. uh, and when I say query data, I mean this is a genuine query, but um, it could also be data from a different data worksheet or data from a data model. By query data, I just mean data that's being pulled from some uh, some defined data source, relational database or Excel file, it's being pulled from some um, defined data source that appears in this list over here. That's what I'm calling queried data. Okay, and now the idea here is I want to see how I can mash this up with some embedded data. Embedded data is either data that I enter manually or that I upload from a local file. So in this case, I'm going to upload data from a local file. Um, but the procedure would be pretty much the same. So the first thing I do is I create a new embedded table. Right? So I can go to new object up here, select embedded table. And an embedded table is just, um, it's basically just a table that you can type values into. So here's a table I could actually, I can click in there, I can type the values in. But in this case, what I want to do is I want to import data from a local file. And so that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna right click on this embedded table, select import data file and find a file called uh, state stats. Right? This is basically census information uh, from, I don't know, the year 2000 or something, or maybe 1990, I'm not sure. Um, so we've got uh, uh, state stats. It's a CSV file. Um, could be an Excel file. Could be a text file. Well, it, it is a text file, but, um, you know, so it could be different, different kinds of uh, text file or Excel file. Press open. Um, there's some settings you can do here, but I'm not going to go into them now. Uh, nothing needs to be changed for this example, and I'm just going to import that data. So this is data that is now uh, imported into this data worksheet. It's still editable, right? So I can still click on it and I can edit these values, but this is basically data that's now embedded in the data worksheet. That means it's saved with the data worksheet. And so, uh, so what I want to investigate is how I can mash up this data with our other queried data, right? So we've got embedded data, we've got query data, and the procedure again is going to be the same, right? So um, what I can do is I can mash up, let's say that I want uh, for each state here, I've got a list of all the states and the census information, and additionally I want in uh, the same data block, I want also the sales for each state, all right? So I need to mash up these two things to do that, and I can do that just on the state names, right? The state abbreviation, so I'm going to um, click on the abbreviation column here and drag it onto the state column there. That gives me a joined table. It's quite wide, but you can see that basically what I have here is, let's see if I can illustrate this. Um, over here on the right side, I've got that sales by state, both columns from the sales by state query, right? That's this query. And on the left side, I've got all of these columns from the state stats or from this query one uh, data block, and you can see that there's the join, uh, inner join on the state uh, name. All right, so basically the result of this, if I take a look at the live preview, is that now for each state, right, so, right, so here I've got all the, all the different states that I have from the state stats uh, data up above, and on each row I have the corresponding total. All right, so this is just an example of mashing up embedded data with queried data. And there's a lot of different uses uh, for this type of thing. Obviously, in some cases, um, you may have data that you need to use that's not in a relational database. It's not in a formal data source of any kind. Sometimes it's in just a local file, like in this case. Um, in other cases, it might be just data that you keep in your, you know, in the back of your brain. You happen to know that there are, you know, the company has, uh, you know, 10 different divisions or something like that, right? And it's not, there's, that doesn't exist in any database anywhere. It's just... Um, you know, it's just knowledge that you carry around. So, you know, those cases, uh, an embedded table is very handy because you can just type that in. Um, another instance where an embedded table is very handy is by, uh, for doing what-if analysis, and that, I believe, is the topic that we're going to look at um, next month, so I'm not going to uh, go into it right now. Okay, so that's an illustration of mashing up embedded data with queried data. Okay, let's take a look at something else. Okay, um, let's look at uh, concatenations, right? So con concatenations are a less common form of 
mashup, but let's see what they are. So I'm going to create a, uh, a new worksheet. And what I want to do is I'm going to uh, pull in a couple of queries here. Um, I'm going to pull in a fast go game, and I'm going to pull in a wireless mouse. And these are very small uh, data blocks, um, so I'll just show you what they are. Okay, little, little data blocks here. Um, and these are queries. These are queries that are both defined on the same data source. As you can see, they're both listed under the orders data source. However, that is not a limitation, right? These, these um, queries could be from completely different data sources. Um, uh, you know, one could be from a text data source. One could be from a relational database. Uh, none of that matters. What matters uh, when you're doing concatenations is that uh, they need to have the same number of columns, which these do, and the corresponding columns have to have the same data type. Right? So if either of those two conditions fail, then you cannot do a concatenation and it will create an error. Right? So same number of columns, same data types for corresponding columns, and these two um, queries do satisfy uh, those two conditions, so we can go ahead and do concatenations. Now, what are concatenations? Uh, concatenations are basically set operations, uh, such as union, such as intersection, and such as difference or minus. Right? So let's take a look at a union, first of all. And the way that this works is you select the two data blocks that you want to union together. You go up to the concatenate table button, which is this guy over here. And then you just select the concatenation that you want to do. So if you select union, then you get a result down here that contains the union of those two data blocks. And the union, as I'm sure everyone knows, is basically um, all of the um, all of the elements from the two data blocks. So in this case, all of the rows from these two data blocks appear in the union. Uh, by default, um, duplicates are eliminated. Right? So um, if we take a look at this um, in the uh, live preview, right, you can see that um, what you'll find in this result, in this union, um, every record that appears in either of these uh, top data blocks appears also in the union, but there are no uh, duplicates, right? Even though there are duplicates, when you look at the when you look at these two initial data blocks up here, you can see, for example, that folk mining appears in both. In the result, it only appears once. That's the definition of a union. Um, however, uh, if you do want to preserve the duplicates, uh, there is a way to do that. And what you can do is you can go back to the composition view, and then you can right-click on the operator, the union operator over here. Select link properties. Okay. And this gives you an opportunity both to change the type of concatenation, right? So you can change from a union to intersection to minus. And it also gives you the opportunity to keep duplicate rows if you want them, right? So if I say keep duplicate rows and then take a look at the data, right? So then I will see folk mining listed twice. And I think there's one other one here, old world insurance, that gets listed twice because it appears in both tables. Um, so uh, in that regard, let's take a look at just one of the other uh, concatenation operations. I'll delete this. And let's take a look at that intersection operation, right? Because now we know, um, just by observation, because these are such small data blocks, it's easy to see things like this, um, we know that there are a couple of um, duplicates, folk mining and old world insurance. Um, if I want to pull out just those shared or common uh, rows, what I would do is a, an intersection. So again, select concatenate table. This time I'll select intersect. Okay, and you can see the symbol is slightly different. And then if I take a look at the data, okay, what I'm going to find are just two rows, just the two rows that have a match in both tables. Okay, so that's the concept of an intersection. Okay, so like I said, this is a less common type of mashup than the joins that we were looking at previously. The most common type of mashup that you'll do um, are, uh, are different types of joins, uh, primarily inner joins, also outer joins, sometimes inequality joins. But something that you might also find yourself doing on occasion are these types of set operations or, um, or concatenations. Okay, let's take a look at a couple final uh, topics. Um, and those uh, last topics are um, less common types of mashup, uh, including merge joins and cross joins. So let's take a look at those, and then I'll uh, take any questions. So first of all, uh, create a new worksheet. Um, 
Let's take a look at uh, merge joins. So I'm going to drag in a couple of queries here, uh, New York customers and New Jersey customers. Okay. Um, and what I want to do here is, uh, now I don't have a good reason for this, but I, I want to illustrate, illustrate it anyway. Uh, what I want to do here is I want to uh, create, so let me see what's in these guys. And so there's our New York customers. I guess there's not that many. And here's our New Jersey customers. And what I want to do here is uh, not form any relationship between these, but rather I just want to stick these two tables together, these two data blocks. I want this data block here to give me a list of uh, my New York customers and this one giving me a list of my New Jersey customers and I just want to see those two data blocks side by side not in any way synchronizing them just sticking them side by side into a single data block now like I said I don't have a really good reason for doing that but um, if you can use your imagination maybe you want to create a report or you want to create a dashboard that has a table just like that in other words uh, a, a single table that has on one side the New York customers on the left side and on the right side the New Jersey customers Right, so you know, hopefully, uh, you know that sounds at least somewhat plausible. Um, so how do you do it, right? How do you do it? It's not a it's not a a regular inner join or something like that because an inner join, uh, you're specifying join conditions that relate the records in the one table with the records in the other table. But these these records are not related. There's no way to to relate these um, to relate these records in that way, nor is it a concatenation, right? A concatenation is a set operation, but a set those set operations are basically stacking one set of records on top of another set of records, either via union or intersection. And again, that doesn't apply to this case. So, so how do you handle the situation where you just want to stick these tables together? Well, there's the concept of a merge join that handles that. And so what you do is you select the two tables, you go up to join table and you find this option called merge join. Now this is not a technical join, like an inner join or an outer join. So in uh, database textbooks, you, you won't find, a, I don't think, um, a, a merge join. This is just a convenience in the event that you need to do this type of thing. So what you do is you select that option, and you get a result that just sticks the one table next to the other table, just like, uh, like by using glue. It just takes the one, sticks it on the other, and you can see what the result is here. So here's the uh, New Jersey uh, records, right? It's customer, company, and so on. All the information from this table, from the New, Jer New Jersey table. And then on the left side, all of the information from the New York uh, table. And you can see that there are empty rows here that are filled with nulls because there are fewer New York customers than there are New Jersey customers. And that's fine. That's, that's the result that you get because it's just sticking the two tables together. All right, so that's another kind of mashup. Uh, like I said, it's, it's far less common than the kinds that we've mentioned before, but um, you know, it's good to know that it's there. Um, and with that, let's look at one final form of mashup that, that we're going to cover today, and that is the concept of a cross-join, also uh, fairly uncommon, but uh, you, know, you might need it in certain cases. So I'm going to create one last worksheet here, and I'm going to grab a couple of queries, uh, fast go game and wireless mouse. Right, and let's take a look at these. And so these again are very, very small, small data blocks, very little data. Um, but uh, hopefully this will, uh, the, the fact that it has little data will make it easier to see what's going on. And what I want to do here is a cross join between these um, two data blocks. Um, there's a couple of different ways to do that. Um, probably the easiest is just to go to the join table button. So what I'll do is I'll select the two data blocks, go up to join table, select cross join, right, and that gives me a result here. And let's see what, what that result is. So those of you who are uh, familiar, with, uh, familiar with this kind of thing will uh, probably know what to expect. But basically what a cross join is, also called a Cartesian product, it's basically um, it pairs up each record in one table with every record in the other table. So you get every possible combination of records in the two tables. And you can see that that's the case if you look over here. right? So he, these are the records from this uh, right table over here. And you can see folk mining, folk mining, folk mining. Right? That's this first record getting paired up with these three records over here, these three rows over here, computer tech, 
folk mining and old world insurance. And then the next one, it goes down to interstate, uh, whatever, interstate shop. All right, so that's the second row here. It gets paired up with all three rows there. And the result is that you get a table that's the, the length of this resulting table is the product of the lengths of these two tables. So in this case, it's three times four, and uh, that's 12. All right, so 12 rows. So um, again, this is called the cross-join or Cartesian product. Um, it, is, uh, it is less common uh, than, than the ones that we've talked about so far. Um, and it does come along with a caution, which is that when you're um, working with large data, the Cartesian product or the cross-join is very inefficient, right? So um, it's fine in a case where we've got just, you know, very little data. And if I want to get the cross product or the cross join of that data, that's fine. Uh, but if you're dealing with um, data blocks that have, uh, you know, thousands or hundreds of thousands of rows because the uh, cross join pairs up every row in one table with every row on the other table, that's a big operation and that's going to be a fairly slow operation. Um, so, um, you know, uh, you may want to think twice before you do that with large data. Okay, I'm going to stop there. Um, basically, what we did is we covered uh, a set of different types of mashup operations, uh, merge joins, cross joins, inner joins, um, join, uh, doing joins on an embedded data, and doing joins across different uh, data sources. So I'll stop there, uh, and I'll take any questions that anyone has. Here's a question. Um, how does the cross join know which field to use as a link? Um, nice question. Uh, and it doesn't. It doesn't matter because there is no relationship between. Right. So here's the question. The question is, right? We when we were doing the inner join, right? We we specified a particular join column or a set of join columns, and that's how the tables get synchronized. But when we did this uh, cross join, we didn't have to select a particular column. And the reason is that there is no, um, it doesn't make any kind of relationship between the columns, right? It's just taking the entire row over here, the entire row, and pairing it up with the entire row from the other table, right? So, um, so there's no additional information that you need to specify. You can just, you know, tell it, okay, do a cross join, and it'll go ahead and do it. Um, but the result has no particular relationship between those, uh, those, um, the records in the one table and the records in the other table. It's just every possible, um, every possible pairing of those records. Okay, any other questions? There's another question. Okay. Any other questions? I'll wait a little bit in case anybody's typing away. Okay, in case anybody's still typing, I'll just, uh, I'll, I'll make my uh, final remarks and uh, oh, there's something. Okay, uh, you're welcome. Um, so, uh, so final remarks. Uh, if you think of questions, um, you know, after I hang up the phone here um, and then you suddenly realize that you had a burning question that you needed to ask, you can email me. Uh, my email is david.fass, F-A-S-S, at inetsoft.com. I'm happy to answer questions. Um, and, uh, and I guess that's about it. So, um, if there's no more questions and it seems like there are not, um, then I will wish everyone a good weekend. Um, for those of you in the East coast where I am, uh, stay warm. Uh, I guess the Detroit area is also, uh, having a bit of a, uh, well, anywhere near Canada, I think is in trouble, but, um, Stay warm, and uh, thank you, and, uh, and uh, hopefully uh, see you all back here uh, next month when we'll take on a new topic. So have a nice weekend.